I think it's important to recognize excellence and achievement wherever it occurs, but especially in our alumni. We as a community, I think, all take pride in the alums from our institution and what they've been able to accomplish. My name is Jen DeVoe and I work as a physician researcher at the OHSU Department of Family Medicine and my work includes seeing patients at Gabriel Park Family Health Center as well as leading a number of research projects focused on health policy and health disparities and how to improve care for vulnerable populations. I went to Montana State and I'm a Bobcat at heart Take the girl out of Montana, but not the Montana out of the girl. And then I went to Boston and went to Harvard Medical School. Moved to England, went to Oxford for off and on four years. Went back, finished my medical degree. Traveled around the world to study different healthcare systems. And then I came to OHSU for residency and did uh, additional studies here to become a better researcher. Good job! Everyday physicians see patients struggling to gain access to basic care. Medications, information, a hospital service that many of us would take for granted. So we need to start thinking about other ways to intervene as advocates to change policies, um, as innovators to change our practices to become more patient and family centered. And then as well as partners with our patients and our teams one-on-one, -on -one, identifying individual needs and then helping to meet those needs. My election to the Institute of Medicine was a great surprise and a huge honor, largely due to the fact that I'm trying to do things a little differently than some folks have traditionally done in biomedical research. Moving towards teams, we're using data from our electronic health record to identify patients that may be at risk or may need some assistance with care management. We have care managers working with that data. You need a team to take care of a patient. You need a team to do a research study. You need a team to think about how to translate what you're finding and disseminate that information to many different audiences. And so nobody can do this alone. I'm John McAnulty, and I'm a cardiologist at Good Samaritan Hospital. Ended up in the world which I never expected of the micro, 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 micro world of electrophysiology. We evaluate and assess heart rhythms generally by uh, inserting wires into the heart and, and creating rhythms and trying to eliminate them, and then using the electrical devices, the pacemakers and the defibrillators. And when I moved to Oregon in 1972, and there was no such thing as electrophysiology. But it became apparent that rhythms are a big part of medicine and that this field developed. So I had the uh, luxury of starting on the ground floor. I'm a student of the field um, and, and learned as I grew with it. And so I'm really the student of many others. Two areas of teaching and research are totally inseparable from patient care. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to kind of mesh them all together over the years. It was all clinical, bedside uh, clinical research and, and projects in, in, in so-called clinical trials. And patients, by definition, have to be a large part about it. And the students just t totally enmesh with the concept as well. The alumni of uh, OHSU have kind of been my family over the last 40 years, and so I know a lot of people out there and so that's very satisfying and it's something interesting to watch something click in them that's always very satisfying yeah, I'm overwhelmed by the people taking my field forward uh, and and there's not a I think a resident or a fellow that I worked with that I haven't felt his carrying it a step beyond what I ever could do or, knew, or do and that's gone on for a long time My name is Debbie Eisenhut. I'm a general surgeon and I'm a missionary with SIM. I'm hoping to return to Liberia soon. Um, I'm doing a lot of speaking about Ebola and the experience there, what's happened, raising prayer support and, and asking people to, to support the effort. Uh, also just uh, since December have been down and going back and forth to Anniston, Alabama, uh, helping, uh, help, helping to train the um, workers to go work in Ebola units in West Africa at the CDC courses there. I mean, I said in high school that I wanted to be a missionary doctor, and it, in medical school, all through my re even residency and in my, in my career, that was something that 
um, I hoped for. I went to Liberia and arrived there in April 2013. We thought of Ebola as only happening in Central Africa. It never occurred to us that Ebola would come to West Africa. We got word that there had been six deaths from Ebola in, in northern Liberia. We knew we had to prepare. So set up a little Ebola treatment unit in our chapel. It was difficult to get our staff initially to come down and work. We had trained them and in anticipation of this, but you can imagine their response when the first patient came. You know, they were terrified. But we wanted everyone to try at least once, and a lot of them did. We got a small group of people that were willing to work in the unit full time. The humidity is about 95%, and then the temperature is between 90 and 100. So you're miserable inside the suit. L1 only had five beds. Eventually, L2 expanded to 125 beds. We ended up being the only Ebola treatment unit in the entire city of Monrovia. Now, that's not beds. Those are just spaces for people to lie down. I guess I'm just glad that, that God impelled us to, to really prepare. If we had not done the preparation that we did, then the capital city of Monrovia would not have had really anything uh, at the height, height of the outbreak. So I, just, I think that was just the Holy Spirit driven that we felt compelled to do this. Thank you for all you do for OHSU and the world. <laughs>